The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. And as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, Jesus said, As for those, these things which you see, the days will come where there shall not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign when the, this is about to take place? And he said, Take heed that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for this must first take place. But the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and pestilences, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be uh, brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be a time for you to bear testimony. Settle it, therefore, in your minds, not to meditate beforehand how, you will how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up by parents and brothers and kinsmen and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake. But not a head of your hair, not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this is a difficult word for us to hear. But we don't come with fear in our hearts to your word, but knowing that you have handed all things in your kingdom over to your Son. And it is your Son that has gone to the cross for us, has died for our sins, and bought our salvation, that we might have our security and our peace of mind in this world through the gift of your Son, through the gift of your kingdom, and we pray that that kingdom would come in us now, that your kingdom through your Spirit would live in us, and we pray that you would send your Holy Spirit now. Help us to not only hear these difficult words, but to understand them. Give us your spirit that through your word we would know your will. And by that same powerful spirit, send us into your creation to do your will in the world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. So as a physical therapist, when I am not uh, pastoring, I have a, a couple of favorite uh, times uh, that, that come along as I am treating people. Uh, and I just want to mention two of those times that, that bring me great joy. Uh, the first one is uh, when they first come to me, when I get to do uh, the initial assessment uh, on somebody. Um, I, I get to pray with them, and more often than not, they, they accept that prayer. Um, and then there's that time comes uh, right after the examination when I tell them the good news and the bad news of why they're there, um, then comes, well, honestly, their least favorite part. I get to give them their home exercise program. <laughs> yes, uh, I get to tell them what's going on, uh, what we can do about it, and then I get to tell them what part they play in that. That is one of my favorite times. Uh, my next favorite time comes about three or four weeks down the road, where these, these three, the, these Areas of weakness that I found, if they have done their home exercise program, most of them have some sort of strength to begin with. Um, but what is it uh, what, that I'm teaching them that uh, through their home exercises, they don't just gain strength, they gain something else in about four weeks that allows them to do something that they couldn't do before, but not just do it, but over and over and over and over again. That is not strength, that is called Endurance? Okay. Now, you, we read about that endurance in, in the gospel lesson today, that by your endurance, you will gain, uh, you will gain your life. 
Um, so uh, I, I want to reflect a little bit, you know, like, uh, you know, kind of like I give home exercises to others. What is, you know, kind of our home exercises, uh, knowing that uh, we're going to, we're going to, gain our, uh, you know, we're going to gain our salvation. We're not going to gain it, but we're going to, we're going to live it out. We're going to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And it's going to be through something called endurance. Um, so when I give someone a home exercise program to do, it is very, I understand that they live in the world like I do. I understand they have families. I understand they have children. I understand that some of the things I'm asking them to do is going to be a sacrifice of time. I also understand that some of what I'm asking them not to do is going to be a sacrifice as well. And that there's going to be pressures in the world at home. There's going to be pressures at work. There's going to be pressures from others in situations for them to ignore what I tell them. To do what they shouldn't do despite the fact that they know that it is not good. So it's often a sacrifice of not just of time, uh, but a sacrifice of uh, maybe I, if, if my back is hurting, I'm not going to go on that hiking trip with my wife in two weeks. So I, I understand the sacrifice that I am asking them. Uh, not just to do what I ask, uh, but the, I understand that there will be pressures for them not to do that. There will be distractions in life. In family, at work, there's going to be distractions that um, are reality. So the fact that we live with those distractions, I want to reflect now on maybe some distractions that the disciples had as they heard this sermon from Jesus. Now, let's just say they probably heard a lot of sermons that they liked. Oh, you guys are going to you guys are going to sit on 12 thrones and you're going to judge. You're going to judge the world. You're, you're going to sit on the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, I'm thinking the disciples were really into that sermon. Uh, now, do we, I know we have uh, any any nurses here, any other medical practitioners that know how to measure blood pressures or heart rates. Besides Anne, okay, that okay. Um, I, I want to reflect on. You know, do you think the disciples, as they're hearing more and more of Jesus speak here, um, that they're a little distracted? Do you think that as they hear Jesus continue on in this sermon, that they're a little bit distressed? Do you think that as they hear Jesus go on and on through this gospel lesson, that they're a little bit anxious? Wouldn't you just love to have like a, a, one of those little finger monitors on the disciples as they're hearing this and watch the heart rate go up exponentially as Jesus tells them not what just is going to happen in the world, but what's going to happen to them. So to say that they are distracted, to say that they are anxious, to say that they are feeling the pressures of being a disciple of Jesus, I think is an, an understatement. After all, look what they are being told is going to disappear. The temple I mean, this is one colossal structure. I mean, this, you think uh, modern, uh, uh, modern architecture is great. I mean, go back to Jesus' day, and I just want to throw out a couple of statistics about the temple. It was, uh, it was a trapezoid. It was 144,000 square meters. Now, you know in a meter, that's three feet, Right? So you take that measurement, multiply it by, the, that's how many feet are encompassed in, uh, in the temple. 20 football fields fit into that temple. This is the center of the Jewish world. Three times a year, all good Jewish males were to make a pilgrimage there for the three major feasts of the Jewish faith. It was the center of life. It was the center of culture. It was the center of work. It was the center of worship, and it was the place that you went to make offerings of sacrifices for what? I confess that I am in bondage to sin. If they couldn't go there, this is where people, the Jewish people, met their God. The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. The same God that with a mighty arm brought them out of Egypt. The same God that with a mighty arm parted the Red Sea. The same God with a mighty arm that let that go onto the armies of Egypt and led them, albeit 40 years because of their stubbornness, led them by a pillar of fire by day, pillar of cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night through the desert to the promised land. This God. If they couldn't meet him at the temple, where were they going to meet him? So you can see the blood pressure, the heart rate. Oh, Jesus, what is this going to happen? Oh, dear Lord, please tell me what the signs are going to be. 
Give me a, throw me, a, if you could read the bubble above there, throw me a bone here, Jesus. Let me know when this is going to happen. Why is it, how it's going to happen. What are going to be the signs? Now, why would they ask those questions? When you know, let's just use a, an, a, an us example. Um, when you know you have company coming, uh, like the in-laws, I don't know. When you know you have company coming, uh, what do you do? Clean like a yeah, you clean like a banshee woman, don't you? Yes, absolutely, but you prepare. You know something is coming, and you prepare for it as best you can. So they want to know, in their minds, what do we got to do to get ready for this? Jesus, when we see something, what's going to go on? What's going to happen? I want to reflect a little bit on that. The signs that are going to happen in the world, and then the signs that are going to happen to the disciples. So in the world, there's going to be false prophets. Not uncommon in Jesus' day. That's why uh, Jesus wasn't taken seriously by the rulers, because there were so many false messiahs. Um, It was not uh, an uncommon thing in that time. Wars, as common as you could get. Tumults. Anybody know what a tumult is? It's not what you do to your garden. Tumult. Anybody know what a tumult is? Confusion. It's, It's mayhem. It's, you, know, you can't get a handle on anything. It's just everything's going crazy. Okay, that's a tumult. Nation's going to rise up again. Nation, kingdom versus kingdom. There's going to be earthquakes. There's going to be famine, pestilence. Does anybody, that's a big word. Okay. Uh, disease, run rampant. Pestilence, disease, run rampant. Um, terrors, and there's going to go be signs from heaven. Now, if I was from New York, I might say with a New York accent, the world's going to go nuts, y'all. That's what we can expect. Maybe they wouldn't use the y'all in, in, a, in a northern kind of way. Maybe they, forgive me, New Yorkers. I, I'm a sinner up here preaching to sinners. But, but it, the world's going to go nuts. The world is going to be um, raging with distractions galore. I mean, you can't look at the front page of the newspaper, any column of the newspaper, and not get distracted by what's going on in the world. Does anybody think that's quite enough to deal with? Yep, nope, Jesus says, no, that's not all, guys. (laughs) If you're signed up with me, guys, it's not just going to be what's happened in the world, but there's going to be some things that because you um, claim that I am king, because you are going to be my disciples, because you're following me, there's not just going to be stuff happening in the world that's going to distract you. Um, You're going to go through something. Something's going to happen to you specifically because you are baptized into me, into my death, and into my life as well. So this is what's going to happen to you. Just in case the stuff in the world wasn't enough, you're going to be persecuted. They're going to bring you before synagogues and deliver you into prison. I mean, remember Saul? What was he going and doing to the disciples? He had letters from the scribes and the Pharisees to go out and do what? To imprison the the followers of the way. This actually came true. Uh, You'll be put before kings and governors of the, the Roman Empire. And anybody think that's enough? Anybody ready for me to stop yet? Okay, sorry, Bonnie, it gets better. It get, uh, Jesus just keeps piling it on here as if what's in the world is not what's going on with them. You know who's going to do this stuff to you? Your parents, your brothers, your family, your friends, those who are closest to you. Is anybody feeling distracted right now? I mean, what can be more distracting than Jesus prophesying that that the persecution, the, the, the things that are going to come upon them because they're his disciples are going to come from their very own closest people. That there's not just going to be suffering in the world, there's going to be suffering because you are a disciple of Jesus. There's going to be a cost to this discipleship, and it's going to bring suffering. And so whether it's in the world or in our lives, it's a distraction. Now, whether we read about the suffering in the world on the front page of the newspaper or whether we are going through it personally, when we are suffering, what is the hardest thing to believe? This is a real easy one, guys. When you are suffering, when the loved one has died, when the, when the, the young one is taken from us, what is the hardest thing to believe in your heart of hearts? That there is a God, there's a God and that he loves us in any way, shape, or form. That is absolutely the hardest thing to believe. But that's the purpose of suffering. 
is that Satan blinds us from the fact through suffering, he will bring suffering for evil to make us think that God does not love us. Uh, But God takes suffering, even the suffering of his son, especially the suffering of his son, that in him we can see in his suffering, the suffering of Jesus, we can see God's love for us in our suffering, that even, can I get a thanks be to God, that suffering that even overcomes death. That's the good news. That's where we take solace in God's suffering on our behalf on the cross. So the purpose of the suffering in the world is to blind us from God's love. But Jesus says, uh, even though all this is going to happen for you, even though the world's going to go nuts, even though your closest friends and family are going to go, are going to turn on you, uh, in the midst of that, it's going to turn out for the good. Jesus says it it, in the Greek, it really says it, that it's going to turn out that this is going to be an opportunity for you to do what? I'm sorry? To To believe. And to the, the word in the Greek is going to be an opportunity to martyrion, to martyr. It's going to be an opportunity for you to witness or to bear testimony to the reality of what God has done in the gift of his son. So there's going to be this opportunity, um, not just to be um, uh, talk about God's love, but to be doers of God's love as well in the world. In the midst of, of suffering, our work is, to, is witnessing that's going to build endurance in the kingdom of God. So Jesus has some advice as to how we're going to prepare to witness to him. Uh, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of persecution, um, you, know, you know, I'm going to prepare you. I mean, this is what the disciples are looking for, right? They want to know when the signs are coming, what are they going to be so we can get prepared. And Jesus says, don't prepare yourself. I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to give you a mouth. It means I'm going to give you the words to say. And he said, I'm also going to give you wisdom. That those are going to come from Jesus. That the words that we speak to others in the midst of our suffering, the actions that we perform to others in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of their suffering, it's not going to come from us, but it's going to come from Jesus. So, uh, it, so we're not here preparing ourselves. But what is the mouth and the wisdom of God right here today with us? What is it? The word, the word yes, I read it. This is God's mouth. This is God's wisdom to us that he is speaking in a very real way in 2016 to his disciples gathered here today around his word and around his meal. So uh, this voice that you hear coming from God, we're just up here scattering seeds. The question is, how is God speaking to you? What is he giving you to say? What is he giving you to do? What is he preparing you to do? That is the gift of the Holy Spirit that we have here. To hear this difficult word and know that it is God who is preparing us. Shining light on our sin through the gift of confession. Shining light on our sin. Not that he's going to up there with a lightning bolt, but that, that we would turn to him and confess it and receive that forgiveness that is just so abundant. If we dare turn, if we dare turn to him, it is abundant and it is there. And that provides a witness in the midst of our suffering in the world. It is going to be that witness and the preparation that is done through the, world, through the word. And so with that word, we're going to hear the words of Paul a little bit differently. We're going to hear that there's, um, because we have been saved, um, we're not going to go sit on our hands and do nothing. That there is work to do in the kingdom of God. So that as God is preparing us here through this word, we're going to go out to the world and heed Paul's uh, admonition not to be idle. Do not be idle, he says. Um, Everybody knows our motto here right now. Our current motto is, when we meet, we eat. Does anybody, uh, okay, 50 pastor points, if you can complete this sense of our old motto from, from several years ago. God's work, our hands. Yes. So there, because of this kingdom of God, there is work to be done in the world. It is God's work in us. And it is something absolutely brand new. 
It is that new song that the psalmist is talking about. It is that new way that you get to, you and I get to leave here touched by the word in our hearts, knowing where the sin is at in our lives and how he is calling us to turn from it to the, the new path. I won't sing it again, but the, sing unto the Lord a new song. Make a, a joyful noise to the Lord because he's given us a different way to go. It's not the old one, but it's the, the new one where we follow Jesus. Not, into, not a path that leads to death and, and death alone, but a, a path that leads us to a, a death from the old life. We will not do things the same way. We will look at the sin in our lives and, and follow Jesus in a different way. That's through the gift of the Holy Spirit. So uh, we have work to do in the world. And that work that we do in the kingdom of God is like our spiritual exercise. So this spiritual exercise, uh, our home exercise program to build up not just strength but to build up endurance is to turn to Jesus is there any reason every single week we say that confession and forgiveness over and over and over and over again it's like an exercise that you do over and over and over again and when the weight of sin is on you and you exercise confession and repentance when you're exercising those spiritual muscles what do you get endurance that as we turn to god in the midst of our sufferings over and over again it is an exercise for our spirits and that is a gift in the midst of the nutso stuff in the world, in the midst of the nutso stuff in your life and in mine, because we claim Jesus as Lord. And that's the spiritual ex. That's the work that we are called to, that repentance in the world, because sin is always at work in our lives, because it is constantly 100% at work in us. We will always need that turning to the word. So by your endurance, you will gain your lives. Now, just so we think we're not out there earning this, this salvation, um, how did Jesus say that we're to gain the kingdom? If you try to save your life, what's going to happen? If you try to do it on your own, if you try to prepare beforehand on your own, if you try to save your life, you're going to lose it. But on the other hand, for those who lose their lives, for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, for those that forsake the old way and turn to the new way, um, you're actually going to save your lives. So I've been waiting to say this to, to someone for a long time, but I can say to you when you, get, when you go out of here, get lost. Seriously. There's a, there's, you can get lost in the word. There's a, a new path that, that God is calling you to. There is work to be done in the kingdom. There is the work of, honestly, I, I'm here teaching Bible study uh, every, uh, every Sunday, and what, there's something that I don't have time to do, and it is get out there on Greenland Road and to rave. There's work to be done in the kingdom. It, you have no idea how many people we have that come to us and say, I see, they come to the church or they come through for some event and they, we see you waving and it's an opportunity to talk about the faith. I don't have time for it. I invite you uh, to do that. So I, I give you free lessons. Uh, we got Bible studies uh, out the wazoo. Uh, we have uh, the campfire prayer meeting we're going to have. I mean, you want to talk about an opportunity to invite someone that you know that I don't, but you have a relationship with. They might not come here to the sanctuary. They might not respond to me knocking on their door, but they know you. They have a relationship with you. And what can be more secular than a bonfire? Hot dogs and weenies and, and, and s'mores and, and, and stuff that looks like what you do for fun in the world. But yet, we, we want to come to this prayer. So I'm ever, I know you're having a hard time. Why don't you come and we'll pray for you? It's not a sanctuary. But it's where two or three gathered in the name of Christ. And you can have an opportunity. That in the midst of the suffering of your life, in the midst of the suffering of those that you know, Jesus says, this suffering is going to turn out to be an opportunity for you to bear witness, to invite, to serve. And the work of the kingdom of God is to be not just hearers of the word, but the doers of the word. So 
anything that I'm naming here, this work to do in the kingdom of God, we can trust in every way, shape, and form that it is going to get done because God's in charge of it. The question that we ask ourselves, is it going to be me? Is it going to be you? Not asking you to do something you don't have the gift for, but if you have the gift, prayerfully consider it. God's going to use you or he's going to use someone else. And he's inviting us in some way to be part of that that eternal life that he is offering to us. So our work is turning to his word and his wisdom for our work in the world and for our endurance in the faith. So as the world suffers and as we suffer ourselves in the world, I pray blessings on your ministry on your calling and mine, for us in this location as the body of Christ. I pray that through our sufferings we would find joy and the opportunity to witness. I pray that for us all, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please take a few moments to meditate on the word and the will of God.